everybody, welcome back. It's John Alexandrov, and uh, this is the third leg, the third component of our video series called The Common Characteristics of Highly Successful People. Now, as I mentioned in the uh, first video, there are probably many more common characteristics that you've observed of the most successful people that you work with or, par or partners with or observed or even in yourself. And I encourage you to send those to me uh, if they're not on my top 10 list, okay? Uh, so we've covered one through six. I'm gonna summarize those at the end of, the, of this video. Right now, let's get to the common characteristic number seven, which is highly successful people see themselves as role models for others. Now, I'm not saying they make a conscious choice or decision to be a role model necessarily. Some do, but some don't. But most of them know that because of their success, other people are going to observe them. Other people are gonna to want to participate in their business or in their life. You know, other people are probably gonna be inspired by them or at least gonna to yearn to accomplish what you're accomplishing or what the highly successful people are accomplishing and they take that very seriously. They take that commitment that, you know, knowing that as they succeed, you know, as they continually to, you know, march towards the fulfillment of their promises and they accomplish the things that they know that they've wanted to accomplish, that other people are going to observe that and they're gonna wanna know, Mary, how did you do that? Steve, how did you do that? You know, so they, they take that aspect of their success very, very seriously. And that's why you'll see very extremely successful people do things like, you know, really maintain their approach to things. They'll maintain their schedule. They main, they'll maintain their attitudes. If you sit down with them and ask them, well, geez, how did you really do this? They'll tell you. You know, they're willing to share their knowledge, their information. Sometimes their time, sometimes not, because again, you know, they have goals and commitments and priorities as well. But typically they know that their role models, whether they've chosen to be so or not, and they'll uphold themselves like that. They'll conduct themselves like that. They'll think like that, and they'll act like that. And make no mistake about it, especially if you have children or other type of relatives, even if you're not consciously choosing to be a role model, you are. You know, one of the most incredible lessons that I've learned in life is that our children don't typically do what we say. Our children typically do what we do. They're observing us all the time and they build up these subconscious beliefs based on observations, not based on what you're saying. And over life, they'll typically follow the same patterns that they've observed in you. Well, guess what? Other people do that as well. It's not just our children. It's you know, business people in the community. It's our employees. You can go right on down the list. They will absor observe you, and they'll typically do what you do, not what you say. So take that responsibility very, very highly because very successful people do. Number eight is, they embrace and create change. Now this one can be a little scary for some of us. Change, I mean, I have to change? Well, you look at every major or any company in the world that's succeeding, or any business in the world or any individual in the world who's succeeding or advancing to the next level of the accomplishment of what they say they want to accomplish, it requires change. It requires us maybe to have a little different approach to something, a little different perspective, a little different way on how we work out or how we eat or the words we use or how we study, whatever it might be, it doesn't really matter. However, this commitment or this realization that change is necessary. Now, the most successful people in the world know that concept so well that they create change. They're at the forefront of change. I mean, did Steve Jobs create change? <laughs> Absolutely. And even though he's passed on now, he's still creating change. You can go, I just use him as an example because he's so well known. You can choose anybody. Did Mother Teresa create change? Yes. Did Helen Keller create change? Yes. Did Thomas Edison create change? Yes. Keep on going down the list. Did they create change? The answer is 
Yes. They have the courage, they have the commitment, and they have the conviction to kind of forge ahead and say, well, even though this might be different, I know it's necessary, or I know it's an opportunity, or I know it's a solution, so I'm going to go ahead and change. Now, many of us fear change, but many of us like to kind of like be in our own little cocoon and you know, play it safe or whatever, and I'm, that's, that's not a judgment. If that's the way you're built and you're happy with where you are and how you're living your life and you know, you've accomplished what 99% of the people in the world say they want. They say they want peace of mind, they say they want to be happy and they want to be loved and they want to love other people. And, and if that's where you are in life, hallelujah, congratulations. However, most people who are watching this video are watching it because they are striving to achieve something that they haven't achieved so far. Or they're looking to experience something that they haven't experienced so far. Those are probably going to require you to change. I mean, I use uh, Steve Jobs as an example. You know, and uh, I can remember the first phone that I had, the first mobile phone I had, it came in a bag. It came in, literally came in a bag. And you would, you would, it had a big battery pack and I could make phone calls and I can remember my first my first mobile phone bill was about six hundred dollars. Right? This was many, many years ago. And I can remember my first car it was a 1967 Chrysler Newport. My, my uncle had this car and he was getting a new car and I think I paid a hundred dollars for it. And, uh, but beautiful car and you know something, if that car was well maintained I could still drive it today. Well, why do we buy new cars? or new computers or new cell phones. We could hold on to the stuff in the past and maintain them and they would still work. I'll tell you why, because the world evolves, right? Everything evolves. And if you're not committed to evolving with it, then if you're a business person or if you're a person who's looking to achieve anything, you're going to be left behind. So when that little kind of like consonants comes, like where that, the, the little gut feeling, you know, inside of you say, oh, you know, I have to do something different. Yes. I mean, I have to change my exercise routine. I mean, I have to get into the office a half an hour earlier. You know, I have to look at this problem with a little different perspective. Uh, yes. The answer is yes. Remember the other things we talked about, self-accountability, responsibility, vision, all of those things, well, those also are part of change. If you're unwilling to change and you're in business or you want to accomplish something of significance for yourself or somebody else, you're probably not going to accomplish it. So very successful people understand that change is required to succeed and in many cases, they have to be the creator of the change themselves to accomplish what they say they want to accomplish. Number nine is that they have coaches and mentors. Now, this is really astonishing. The more that I researched this, you know, and the more I checked into this, how extremely successful people at the highest level, at some point in time, but most of, most of, mostly continuously through their entire life, had a mentor or a role model or a coach or a business coach that was constantly in their lives, constantly helping them see things differently, improve their vision, improve their strategy, improve their routine, improve their techniques. It's, a, it's amazing, whether it's in athletics, or whether it's in education, or whether it's in business, or philanthropy, you can go right on down the list, but you will see the people who achieve at the highest level will put their ego aside. They have very strong egos to accomplish what they say they want to, but they're willing to put their ego aside and be coached or mentored by somebody else. Now, uh, I tend to use Boston and Boston sports as analogies because I live here. And a few weeks ago, uh, the Patriots won their fifth Super Bowl. And that week leading up to the Super Bowl, I heard Tom Brady interviewed on a local radio station. And the, uh, the person who was interviewing Tom Brady said to him, Tom, you know, I've been playing here now for 16, 17 years. This is your seventh Super Bowl. 
And one of the things that really amazes me is we've never really seen any public conflict between you and Bill Belichick, who's the coach of the team. Now, Tom Brady is world famous. He makes millions of dollars or earns millions of dollars a year. He earns way more than the coach earns. He's been to 11 AFC championship games and has won, been to seven Super Bowls and won five of them. You would think somebody with that level of accomplishment would, would have a pretty strong ego, right? And say, well, I have kind of figured it out. And he said, well, I've learned over my career that I need to be coached and I need a coach who can lead me in the right direction to the fulfillment of my goals. And, the, and the, the, the announcer just kept pressing him and pressing him and pressing him. And he said, hey, listen, this is what I learned. I'm the player, he's the coach. I'm the player, he's the coach. He knows more about the game than I do, even though I'm the one who's on the field performing. And the reason we've been to 11 AFC Championship games and seven Super Bowls, and I've won now five of them, is because I understand my position and my role. I'm the player, he's the coach. So, if you're looking to get to that next level of success, and you say that you really are committed to it, and you're willing to make promises, and to be accountable, get a coach who's willing to help you build that roadmap to get to where you say you wanna go, and then make sure you put your full faith and trust in that person to help you. I'm not saying to give over your power to that person. I'm not saying to become subservient to that person. Do the homework. Make sure you hire somebody who knows what they're doing, has a proven track record of success of helping people achieve at the highest level. And then become a partner with that person in the accomplishment of your goals or the fulfillment of your promises. But every single person that I have ever worked with who's achieved what they say that they've wanted to achieve in business or in life have done it with a coach or a mentor or a guide or a role model. Please, 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 please don't push this one aside and say, well, I can figure it out on my own. Or what does that person know? They're not going to know any more than I know. Guess what? They do. They can help you. You simply are not going to get to the level of accomplishment or achievement that you can either as fast or as profitably or as easily without being coached or mentored. You might get there eventually on your own. You're gonna pay a very high price to get there. And then common characteristic number 10 is that they commit 80% of their time to the highest priorities in business and in life. They do a phenomenal job of filtering through the junk and saying, this is a priority and this isn't. I should say yes to this and no to that. They understand they're not going to have to be, they're not going to be a be all to end all for everyone. They know that there are extremely important tasks, very important plans or routines or methodologies that they're going to have to carry out or relationships built that they're going to have to carry out in order to accomplish their goals or fulfill their promises. And then when any of this stuff filters in from over here, that might seem important might seem urgent, but really isn't. Extremely successful people say, mm, sorry, I can't go there because I have to be focused on the priorities that are going to carry me or propel me or empower me to accomplish my goals. It's absolutely vital and critical that every single day you do not allow your energy, your time, your money, and your resources to leak out to areas that are simply are not a high enough priority for you. Now, you know, people ask me about this all the time. Well, how do I know what a priority is? Well, it's pretty easy. Once we lay out your goals and promises, and once we find out what truly is your compelling reason to succeed, I can point out to you within 30 seconds what's a priority and what isn't. I mean, so it all starts with that, but please, 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 please don't get caught up into this I have to be everything for everyone. Says who? No, you don't. And again, if you look at the most successful people in the world, you, you know, over time or now, or whether they're a role model of yours or someone that you just have observed, you will see how focused and determined they were on how they managed their time 
their money and their resources. They just simply knew that it just couldn't be fettered away. They had to stay focused on what they knew they needed to do to accomplish their goals or fulfill their, their promises, okay? So now let's go back through one through 10. And I know Ryan has created a document on these uh, common characteristics that you'll be able to either request from us or download somewhere, or maybe at the end of watching this video, you'll be able to do so. So you'll have these on a document. Um, but the first is they have clearly defined goals. They're almost always in writing. Those goals are converted to promises. In other words, people say, okay, this is my goal. And then I say, okay, are you really going to promise yourself and other people that you're fully committed to this? If you can't say yes, then guess what? It's not a goal. It's just a hope, it's a wish, or it's a dream. The second is they maintain a positive mental attitude. The third is they visualize and affirm every single day. They build mental muscle every single day. They give themselves mental nourishment every single day. And that inspires them, keeps them focused, and also helps them to attract the resources that they need or to see the guideposts they need to see in order to fulfill their promises. Fourth, they take personal responsibility for everything, everything. They never feel the need to apologize and they never feel the need to make an excuse. Do they succeed at everything? No, does everything always go their way? No, but they never feel the need to make an excuse or to apologize because they know within their heart and within their mind that they simply are not gonna play the victim to circumstances. Next, they're willing to be held accountable. Self-accountability and external accountability as well. They're committed to continuous improvement. They see themselves as role models for others. You know, whether you wanna see yourself like that or not, you are. They embrace and create change. They have coaches and mentors and they commit 80% or more of their time to the highest priorities, the things, to the activities, to the relationships, to the thoughts, to the partnerships that are going to get them where they want to go or help them experience in life what they say they want to experience. When you can check off 10, all 10 of these, you are on the rocket ship to wherever you want to go. Because every single person that I've ever worked with that have had these 10 common characteristics have achieved Again, whether it's in sports or athletics or education or politics or business or philanthropy or medicine, doesn't really matter. Every single person that I have ever worked with that can check off all 10 of these have achieved at the highest level. So ask yourself, how am I doing? And then ask yourself, am I really committed to going where I say that I want to go? And if you are, over time, you'll be able to check off all 10 items as well. Now, I've mentioned several times throughout these videos that I'm happy to assist you along that path. That's my career, that's what I do. You can tell that I'm very passionate about it. I can give you client after client after client who's achieved amazing things. For some of them, things that they never thought they were gonna be able to achieve. And you can call them, and you can talk to them, and you can ask them about these characteristics and they'll tell you, yes, once I could check off all 10 of these, I achieved at the highest level, not only for myself, but for the other people in my life as well. And I know you wouldn't be watching this video unless that was important to you as well. For those of you who really don't know me that well, again, I'm John Alexandrov. You can go ahead and Google me and see all the information. I'm very public, I'm very accountable for who I am and what I do. Again, you're gonna be able to download the information that, that we just covered. And I'm sure uh, Ryan, again, is embedding, you know, in this video, my contact information. And by the way, please share this information. You know, if you decide never to contact me or never to talk to me or reach out to me, that's okay. But please share this information because it's extremely important, it's very vital, and you'll be helping a lot of other people by sharing it as well. Hey, have a great day, everybody. I look forward to talking to, uh, with you, for those of you who do reach out, and for those of you who don't, please, please, please have a blessed day, have a bl blessed career, and take this information and put it to the best use that you possibly can.
Dang.